Hello, and welcome to The No More Show. This is Sarah Morell Vaughn, the founder and co-creator of No More. The No More team and I have put together these podcasts to help you live your healthiest life. And if you're already there, then these podcasts will help you to stay on track. We're so glad that you've joined us to say no more to toxicity in your life. Today we want to talk about eight mistakes that are pretty common when switching to a healthier, more holistic life. The first one we want to talk about is mindset. And these are all mistakes that we've made, so we're speaking from experience. Definitely. (laughs) Learning the hard way. Yes. Mindset is so important and it really is the make or break of making a lifestyle change. So if you are doing all the right things on the outside, but it's not good in here, then it's not gonna add up. You're sending two completely different signals. And I actually just was listening to a song on the radio the other day, and I was like astounded. I was, it was the first time I heard the song and the beat was super catchy. And it was like, the words were something along the lines of, I want you to ruin my life. And I was like, oh my God, I can't sing this because it's so important what we put into our brains and our, in our minds and our emotional, our mental and our spiritual health, not just what we're eating. And our mindset is so important to be on top of. So whether that's motivational videos in the morning, meditating Mm -hmm. in the morning, uh, mind dumping when you just journal everything that's in your mind to get it out on paper, it is so important. And science has proven over and over again how connected our minds are with our bodies. So uh, when you get stressed, a lot of times you get sick. That's actually the only time I get sick, um, knock on wood and thankfully, is when I'm under stress. So it has a direct correlation with what is playing out in your life. So mindset. Absolutely. Actually, she just got me onto one called Think Bank. Think Bank, yeah. So at night, as you fall asleep, you pay yourself for the things that you've done during the day and you pay yourself more for the things you didn't really want to do. Um, You're depositing money into a mental bank. It's a really cool process, actually. We'll post the link. Yeah, to (laughs) to do it. And for me, I like fall asleep after like the third one and then the next day I'm like, how much money do I have? I forget because I fell asleep. (laughs) But it's a fun practice. Um, There's other ones out there where you just say mantras to yourself. And then waking up in the morning, a really big one, I think when you're attracting or sending out and collecting things to yourself, is setting the intention. Yes, setting the intention. I just started doing weddings and it it's like the signature move when I do the ceremony is to set the intention for that marriage. What is the intention you're setting for the day, for your move into a more holistic, healthy life? Um, whatever it is, business, what's your intention with that? And set that every single day. I listen to a morning meditation. I personally love Abraham Hicks. Um, and it's just, today is going to be a good day. It is. And it does. It shifts it. If, if that is your intention, then you set your little compass. We call it the trim tab. And they, that's on a boat. That tiny little thing on a boat is what conducts it to where it's going. So your subconscious is your trim tab. And if you're setting the intention and aligning yourself in your mind, you're going to make healthier decisions because you've committed to that. Um, also some tips when you're moving into the more healthy world is to say, I don't versus I can't. It's huge in the brain. Mm -hmm. I removed gluten from my life a few years back. And for me, that's what I needed. I, all the chronic inflammation went away. Um, I used to have all sorts of issues from bloating to UTIs to headaches. Um, and, and I thought, again, this was one under my illness, um, when I was filing for disability, I thought they, they said, you have fibromyalgia, your body's just attacking itself and there's nothing really you can do. We don't really know why. Um, and for me, it was gluten. My body just had a reaction to it. And instead of going around going, oh, I can't, which at first I did. And I was like, oh, I can't pour me. Um, I heard this really great talk and it was like, switch that um, to I don't. And it was so empowering. And now I'm like, I don't, and I feel better. <laughs> and it's way better than gluten. Um, And a big thing when I switch or when I work with other people and and for me is meditation. It is so key 
because we really have to discover what's underneath our mindset, what's in that subconscious. Why are we choosing to eat foods or to use products or to not move our body or to have unhealthy relationships in our life? Why? And that's really what you have to get to and discover is what's underneath. Um, so meditation is a really big thing that you can do outside of journaling, mantras, mm -hmm. think banks. Um, so that brings us to our second routine. <laughs> it helps so much getting into the habit. You're every day setting yourself up as this is that you're a win. Um, like pulling really good foods into your house, not pulling toxic foods into your house, making that a routine that you prep your breakfast the night before, or prep your lunch if you aren't home when you work, um, things like that, that every day set you on that path of autopilot to be successful. Yeah, you totally need a plan. Um, it'll help the process go so much smoother than if you didn't have a plan. And um, it's just like if you're meal prepping, if you're doing everything on a Sunday, and not that it's feasible for everybody, but it makes the week go by so much easier because you're not in the moment right there where you're starving and you reach for something mm -hmm. unhealthy or easy, you have something prepped for you. So it's really, really important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And getting the routine, like scheduling yourself out. Yeah. Um, Brendan Burchard um, has this planner that he just put out and it's really great. Every day you set yourself up, you ask yourself certain questions and you plan out the week, you plan out the month. That's really good for goals, but that's helping you to stay in your routine. So, you know, am I, am I going to practice yoga three days a week? I'll know when that is. I'm setting my routine. Then it, when things come at you in life, like she was saying, you're prepped, yeah, you're ready, yeah. you, you mm -hmm. know where it's at. And then, you know, sometimes having that plan B or C. Mm -hmm. And the next step, building your mistake. tribe. <laughs> building your tribe. Mm. So a lot of, you'll hear a lot of motivational speakers and um, I've talked to Sarah before about like when I was in my network marketing days, I think we've all had that phase. Um, and they talk about, or one of, one of the best things that I got from network marketing is all the personal development that they push at you. But it's awesome because the mindset, every single morning you're doing that, the routine, you're doing that. And the next is building your tribe. So having people around you I think, I don't know who said it, but the five closest yeah. people to That's you, so you are the combination of those people. Yeah. So if you really get real with yourself and really look at that and examine it and have personal awareness, which is so important, building your tribe is so vital. Mm -hmm. You want people in your life who challenge you, who force you to be better just by being around them. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier because it challenges you to get to the next level instead of being with people who may um, have habits that you're trying to get away from. If if you have a, an addiction, I'll go into addiction, if there's an addiction there, being around people that have the same addiction, it is gonna be a battle uphill, upstream, and it makes it so much harder. So being around supportive people, there are so many people in this world who are ready and willing to support you in your lifestyle changes and your goals and your dreams and your visions, all of that. There are people there that are ready and willing to do that. And up until my move to Austin, Texas from Orlando, Florida, a little less than two years ago, I had such a hard time and I think it, it goes back to my intention. I just, I didn't have the intention of having great people around me and I had good friends that were supportive um, and family as well. I have a great family that's super supportive, but I wasn't getting to the next level. So I wasn't challenging myself and I didn't have the people around me that would push me to go to the next level in business and life in marriage and relationships and everything. So mm -hmm. when I moved here, I really set that intention and oh my God, this whole world of powerful women entrepreneurs opened up that I never knew existed and I am in heaven because of that <laughs> like it's so exciting so there's a whole tribe of people out there waiting for you to open up and to it's a reciprocation of support from you to them and from them to you it is so important to up level yourself in that way definitely so you're building on the energy you're creating that snowball mm -hmm. when you first start shifting to remove toxicity from your life you probably have toxic people in your life or people that are gonna fulfill that same prophecy that you've been telling yourself over and over. So even if it's a Facebook group, like 
we're in Natural Moms. That's how we met. Um, and getting to that where you can just have an online forum. So if you're trying to change your diet or trying to get more active or you're trying to create a company, just whatever it is, removing toxicity. If you're depressed, find some people that are already where you want to be. Mm -hmm. They call There's this leaping where you practice being the person you want to be already. Mm -hmm. So pretend you're already there. Pretend you're already skinny or happy or successful or whatever it is. We see you. Yeah. Just start activating that. There's yes. archetypes. You can, so some days I put on my Oprah pants <laughs> and I'm Oprah. Or <clears throat> a while ago when I first went on my flight, I put on Angelina pants because Angelina, I mean, she probably has like 500 people that go with her. But I'm thinking about this woman flying on a plane with all these kids. And, you know, I, so I was Angelina for the plane with my crazy kids. <laughs> and it really helps us. Mm -hmm. Fake it to make it's my favorite quote. Get around that community um, that's really going to help you. And you learn so much. Yes. That's why mom groups are so helpful. You know, when you don't know, you don't know. So when you're switching to eating healthier, to moving your body, um, there's all these things out there. There's all this education that exists. And if you don't get into that community, you're missing out. So find the community. And it's really easy to do, like we said, even if it's a Facebook group or meetup. Um, there's an app called meetup and you can find local things going on around you. Uh, yeah. Or podcasts like this, just following it and you build up on it. Yeah. And pretend you're having a conversation with us back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just <laughs> conversate with us. Yeah. Just message, comment, conversation. <laughs> I love making up words. I see things I like, like that combined word. I feel like someday one of the words I make up will be an addiction. It will. Yeah. Like Rachel Ray. Yeah. Make up. Who made up the language anyway? Why can't I make up my own words? We totally can. Go, wait to see my spelling. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. Anyways, the, what is this? One, two, three, four. This is the fourth thing um, that we have noticed within ourselves that you, common mm -hmm. mistake that you can make when switching to a healthier life? Assumptions. Assumptions. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, I assumed organic makeup would be non-toxic. That is not true. A lot of my organic makeup had aluminum in it. Yeah, that's organic, but like organic doesn't mean healthy. Mm -mm. Um, so making assumptions with your food, uh, you, know, you really gotta, Read the labels. I really, 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 really can't stress that enough. Turn it around, read the organic. Step one for me is organic because pesticides um, destroy your own ecosystem as well as the environment. You really want to get everything organic as you can and it's going to help you feel better instantly, which is then going to help you on whatever path you're trying to get to. Anything <laughs> on assumptions? Um, I was thinking something, but I totally lost my train of thought. Just to piggyback on what Sarah was saying, when you're reading ingredients or you're starting to take, you have to take control of what comes into your house mm -hmm. and that lifestyle change. You cannot leave it up to manufacturers and these big corporations because they do not have your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. They do not have the best interest of your children there. Mm -hmm. They're in the business of making money. So they're going to put Disney characters on a product that is full of high fructose corn syrup and food mm -hmm. coloring that's been linked to ADHD and all these crazy illnesses and diseases mm -hmm. and it's sicknesses really yeah you yeah. have to you have to get empowered make it exciting to be empowered mm -hmm. to take control of that aspect of your life mm -hmm. so um when i was first getting into ingredients i literally printed out a list of all the ingredients to stay away from mm -hmm. for instance msg mm -hmm. monosodium <laughs> glutamate it has like 20 different names that it goes by and high fructose corn syrup, it goes by all these different names. So they're getting trickier and trickier, the companies and corporations, as we're getting smarter and smarter. Mm -hmm. So it's something... Just pull them out. Yeah, exactly. Look for ingredients you know. Yeah. If you can't pronounce it, don't buy it. Yes. If I don't know it, it totally. I don't buy it. Yeah. Farm fish, no good. You really mm -hmm. want wild fish. So there's some just... We'll do a, a thing on that later. But um, in general, shop, like they say, shop on the outside of the grocery store, which yeah. means just food you're going to cook at home. Yeah. You gotta cook more Some at home. Foods. Unless you're really rich and you buy a cook, you gotta you just gotta cook more at home. <laughs> and even assumptions with the people that you're in your life. So if this isn't about food for you or the products that you're using, like I mentioned with makeup, mm -hmm. um, making assumptions that 
the people in your life have your best at heart, you know, like that's just, everybody's in their own movie and yeah. it's not personal. They just have their own movie going on. And sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't even have their own best interest for themselves. I mean, it's, it's pretty uncommon to me. You know, it's a rare thing to meet a Lindsay. Like <laughs> she's so amazing. And one of the first things she ever said to me was, oh, this is pulling up my self-defeating behavior. And I was like, oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> she grew up walking on coal with Tony Robbins. Um, and that's, that's what you want to look for. If you're really trying to elevate your life, you must move from victim to responsible. I can't yes. stress that enough. And when you're making assumptions, you're still a victim. And then when things happen to you, like, oh, you know, you're still a victim. Nobody's going to live your life for you. No one is going to take you to the level that you want to be. And you're here to be your highest expression. Yes. That's why you're here. So don't make assumptions. Yes. Number six. Next. Intuition. This is probably my favorite. Probably your favorite. Yeah. Maybe. It's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Intuition is everything. We have this perfect intricate thing inside of us called our intuition and third brain everybody third has it brain. everybody and if you think you don't have it it's just because we are brought up in a culture unfortunately that teaches us not to pay attention to it so mm -hmm. finish all your food make sure every bite is off of that plate that goes against your inner knowing of when mm -hmm. to stop eating and listening to your body and mm -hmm. we're rewarded with sweets Again, that goes back to not listening to your body. Mm. And so part of taking your journey into holistic health and healing and whatever that means for you is really going inside, getting quiet, quieting your mind, quieting the outside world, um, detaching yourself from all the beliefs and everything that you were taught as a child or that you learned in school or TV shows or whatever, and centering yourself in your being. Your intuition is a superpower. It is so mm -hmm. powerful. And the more you practice it, the more you listen to it, the stronger it becomes. Mm -hmm. People ask questions about intuition. Well, how do I know which one's my intuition? You feel it. You feel it. You feel the difference. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear it in our dialogue. Vicki is my mentor and she always has a dinosaur over here with her puppets when she's teaching. So no, it's not gonna work. Don't listen to that one. That's not your, that's not your intuition. When your intuition speaks to you, you, you feel it and for me it turns into words um, and it might not for you. But it feels like a positive choice. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little tiny tug that takes you. Sometimes it's big. We are actually uh, one of the only species that exist that will walk down a dark alley despite what our intuition tells us. Animals don't do that. Why should we do that? So when we're, when we're feeling, mayday, don't do this, trust that. And there are some practices that you can do. Again, you go back to meditation. Um, <clears throat> building that intuition and when you get still and you start listening you can hear it more and more and the more you do it the more you get better at it but there's also some other physical tests that you can do um i think what it muscle testing muscle testing yeah. kinesiology mm -hmm. um and that can help build you know what your inner your inner voice is saying your body is literally incapable of lying Literally, your mind can lie. Logically, we can lie, but your body, your physical body, is incapable of lying. Hmm. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So listen to it. Yeah. Check in with it. My intuition. I'll just share what it feels like. Is when something feels in alignment, or it feels like it's the right choice. I almost. It's like a pathway that I can feel inside of my body, like this pathway mm -hmm. that opens up, mm -hmm. and it feels light and airy and fresh and easy. Mm -hmm. And I've been Going practicing, downstream. yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I've been practicing saying yes to those things. Mm -hmm. Get out of your head. Yeah, out of your head. And into your heart. Yes. And that's how you totally. Our friend, my friend Lou, used to say like, get out of your head, get in your heart. Mm -hmm. it's, really it's so important. Yeah. yeah. And the no feels like blocked, heavy, dead end, not just yeah. not good. And mm -hmm. it's there for you when you learn to pay attention to it. You'll be amazed at what you can discover within yourself and, and all of the answers that you are seeking in the outside world are actually within you. And it's just a matter of connecting to that divine source of infinite knowledge that never ends, that's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And science is actually another one of these amazing studies that I read into, is that science has shown that our brains can walk into a room, hello doggies, uh, um, <laughs> And our brain will fastly pick up on a lot of things that's happening and then you'll get a feeling. Mm -hmm. But you haven't analytically processed that yet. 
So sometimes, you know, you know, I talk about spirit or feeling that infinite source, but also if you're just a science person and you really want to just lean towards more science, um, science is there to show you that that is a third brain. They, they've proven that your gut is another third brain. So when you're feeling here, your heart is the second brain and then you have the brain that we really are aware of. Um, it's picking up and they're speaking to each other. And so you really want to trust it and lean into that feeling where you practice what you're trusting. If you're like, oh, this is fear and I'm going to trust fear and I'm trusting this mad and I, my gut's telling me. That's not how your gut works. Your, your gut's like, uh, oh. like if it's a fear, uh, it's like just a little glitch in it and you can tell that you know, that just doesn't feel right for me. And I, I maybe should take some time to open that up. Jackie used to say to me all the time when we would have these discussions, I want to take some time to think about this and come back to you. And I was like, well, yes, some time. Like, why don't we just figure it out now? <laughs> um, so, so do it with yourself when you might start practicing this. Just take some time. Yeah. And check in and then see if your intuition was right. And then you can notice what that feeling was when you went there. Mm -hmm. And if people are dishonest with you in your life, and it's causing you to doubt your own intuition. You really need to open that up because it is the number one tool that's there to serve you. And that's why getting still meditation, um, you know, really practicing deep inner listening is the number one thing you can do when you're moving toxic, removing toxicity from your life. Cause you need to get to the why you need to get to what's underneath there. And that's, that's your intuition. It's, it has been with you since, before your creation and since you've been created and it, that is your main tool to and just to add something else going into feelings your feelings are also a um like a message from your soul mm -hmm. from your spirit mm -hmm. so if you're feeling an uncomfortable feeling mm -hmm. it's a message from your inner self from your intuition that hmm, maybe something's not right here mm -hmm. and if it feels really good and it's and it's uh, making good feelings come up, then you're probably on the right track. Mm -hmm. So your feelings are a gift. It's like a guidance system, an inner guidance system also, along with your intuition. Absolutely. So, so if you're depressed, something is off. I, I have you know an arsenal of network and people that just keep repeating these same things. Oh, I'm still here, I'm still here. It's five years, I'm still depressed. What's wrong with me? I don't know why. Well, your spirit's been trying to tell you for a while. Whether you're living in the wrong place or you're not in the right career or you're not taking care of your body, it's those light messages that say, hey, something worse is happening and it's either you're not your higher, highest expression or you're about to fall off and get really, really sick. Like it's there to tell you and it's not a victim. It's there to serve you. So it's not, oh, poor me. It's, wow, this is here and how's it? How, thank you. What How can you do you to change it? Yeah. Because these are all, all signals that are coming up. And if you do nothing to change it, nothing is going to change. Mm. I had really bad depression and anxiety as a teenager. And I used to get uh, panic attacks to where I would, you know, shiver really bad. And I would be sweating. And I would even physically throw up mm. because I had panic attacks so bad. I overcame all of that. Occasionally, I'll get a little bit of anxiety. But I am, it's super manageable. And I overcame all of that by listening to myself really tuning into myself. I've never taken a pill for anything mm -hmm. of that nature. And I'm not bashing that at all. I'm just saying it's possible. Mm -hmm. You don't, just because you're feeling that doesn't mean you have to accept that. Do something to change it. Empower yourself. Inspire yourself. Mm -hmm. All of these things we're going over are great, great starting points. Mm -hmm. And your food, what you're eating, what you're using on your skin, your community yeah. um, can all affect your gut. So your food affects your gut. And then you have hormones at all. So you can be feeling genuine feelings of like yes. anxiety. I often find that people who have high anxiety, you can link it back to a lot of that's in their diet. Yeah. There's too many antibiotics and meats, too much hormones. Um, there's a lot of things that are processed that are just freaking out our gut. Yeah. And it's sending signals, mixed signals to our brain. And again, the research out there, this isn't us just making it up. We are not doctors, by the way. So if your doctor has you on a pass day on that, but open up the book for knowledge for yourself mm -hmm. and see if it is some of these things fit, if, if it's causing what's going on outside of the fact that you might not be in the right path or whatever. If you're, if you know you're really happy everywhere in life, but you're feeling these feelings, yeah. then it's, it could be linked to your diet. Yeah. Next one. Counting calories. Mm -hmm. Now, before you freak out, like what, what else does count calories? Um, there's really an idea behind this. It's really not important. <laughs> it's not. And it freaks your brain out. Yeah. You like get into this clench, like, Oh, I gotta like, 
100 calories. And I know Oprah's on a Weight Watcher, and I love you, Oprah. Um, but there's something that happens in the brain when you when you get this restricted feel. But what I like about the new Weight Watchers version, and why, why I think Oprah is feeling it so much, is that vegetables are free. There's no points for vegetables. Um, and there's a couple other ones in there that are like nothing. There are no points. And this is what we mean by don't stop ca counting calories. Science, again, has already proved that it's not about calorie counting. It's about eating wholesome foods. Mm -hmm. And you can eat, even Oprah did this show once. I know I love Oprah. <laughs> where she had all these people go to a camp and they ate, they had to eat like 10 pounds of nuts and vegetables a day. And they just shredded weight. Even though they were forced to eat more than they've ever eaten in their life, they just kept losing weight because it was real wholesome food. Mm -hmm. it, raw, I mean, some foods are better cooked, but for the most part, you just want to stay with anything that's overpackaged, overproduced, other ingredients. If you take that all away, mm -hmm. you stop counting calories. Eat. Especially if you're in tune, intuitive eating, listening to your body. Stop eating before a little bit before you're full so you don't get to that threshold. Mm -hmm. So you're not... What if the amount of calories you have to take in makes you full? Then you're not listening to your body. You're listening to something on the outside that's not honoring what's best for your body. Mm. And then you're in your head mm -hmm. when you're eating. You're not, you're not in your body when you're eating. And Ayurvedic medicine, um, medicine has this saying that they say it's, it's not what you eat, it's what you digest. And really centering yourself, chewing when you're eating it, you know, really enjoying the food that you're eating. And knowing that it's alive and serving your, your body, not for the addiction like sugar or carb that you're perpetuating. Um, so stop counting calories, go to more wholesome foods. Um, but if you are not eating wholesome foods, then you, know, you really do. Just watch, listen mm -hmm. to when you feel that you're full. Do you really need it? That's what she's saying. Do you really need it? Or is this an addiction part of your brain that's telling you they've proven that sugar is more addictive than cocaine in a study with rats? Crazy. About that. And sugar's in everything. It's in everything. And so it's, it's hidden. Hard. Yeah. So it's really hard. Mm -hmm. We know this isn't easy when you first start, but it gets easy. And the more you start building this momentum up, like I don't have refined sugar anymore. I, and if I have refined sugar, I feel so sick. Yeah. I eat a whole honey bear <laughs> on a daily almost. <laughs> and like nuts. Man, I, according to the calorie counting of nuts, I should be really obese because I just eat handfuls. I mean, nuts this girl. Mm -hmm. I almost can't leave the kitchen because I'm eating all the time. <laughs> but I'm eating wholesome foods yeah. that my body's just like, give me more. Um, so it's really key. Yeah. Number seven. Going on a diet. Mm -hmm. Kind of piggybacks into the calorie counting. Um, it really just goes back to what we're talking about is just eating a wholesome, whole food diet. Mm -hmm and not diet like the name diets, like mm -hmm. keto and everything going on. Mm -hmm. It's a great starting point, but again, there's so many restrictions. And a lot of the, I, I worked in a health clinic where I was um, helping women and some men with uh, losing weight. And most of them would talk about the diets that they went on and they worked and they didn't work. And um, one of the biggest things was yo-yoing with their weight. Mm -hmm. And it's because we're putting our trust into a fad, into a diet, into a book, into a mm -hmm. whatever it is. And we're not, it goes back again to taking a second, stepping back and really listening to what's going on in your body instead of a specific diet. Mm -hmm. Trust your intuition. So, everybody's different. Everybody's And different. everybody's body needs something different. So the one diet fits all won't work for anyone. Mm -hmm. And then you start this diet... And when you fall off because you're malnutrition, you're like, oh, vegan isn't for me, or oh, keto is not for me, or whatever. So I, you know, I just can't be healthy, or you gain the weight back, and then you feel depressed about it. Well, your your body needs something different. There is um, some studies behind blood types and them needing different foods. You know, I don't know exactly if that fits. Um, also, Ayurvedic medicine suggests that you have a different dosha, and according to your dosha, you, you would eat certain types of foods, um, so you can do dosha testing and, and see if, you know, that fits for you as well, mm -hmm. and you can feel it. Do you feel really good afterwards? Do you have more energy? And when you get, when you get, sometimes when I just get the right thing, my body might like, yeah, because I will, I'm very specific about making sure I eat so healthy that sometimes I forget to check in, do, you know, am I just eating when I know is healthy or is this really what my body needs? Um, I am still breastfeeding. So a lot of 
stuff comes out of me and I really need a lot of calories and I need a lot of healthy foods. And it is really important for me and for any of you out there that's working out a lot or you know you are nursing a child um, or you have some autoimmune disorders you know you're going to need something different and you're probably going to need if you are working out or or providing for a life or baby needing more calories so again go back to that setting yourself up to be supported um so you stay in your routine yeah mm -hmm. and this everything we're talking about this is a lifestyle so diets are kind of okay let's do this for a month and then we'll be done with it holistic lifestyle is this is the habit these are the habits that we're making that we're going to follow every day or most of the days mm -hmm. to really feel good and honor who we are and to be able to achieve the vitality that we're looking for mm -hmm. so if you don't have your health you have nothing mm -hmm. health is quality of life it's everything everything you can't take care of your kids at 100 percent if you're sick or you're inflamed or you're tired and groggy and having all of these things going on so this is a lifestyle that you're committed to and it i know it's cliche but it's it's not the destination it's the journey mm, whatever it's so called. true enjoy it now <laughs> and if you're not feeling good i mean that's what, she, what we're talking about that is everything yeah so doing a diet um you know maybe it's great if you're like okay i'm just gonna do this because i want to get to my first step um, so right now all the fab is keto, 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 but we have read some things about keto not being good for the gut because what happens with any diet, just like this gluten-free fab, is that then the markets get a hold of it and they start yeah. producing these high processed foods that, oh, this is keto. It's just carb. It's not even organic, so it's full of pesticides. It has stripped minerals. It's destroying your gut. So you really want to check in. You, you know, use that intuition. Um, and if you want to use a diet just to kind of kickstart you, still check in with yourself. Yeah. Is this what I need? Am I feeling it? And if you, you know, you do practice within modern medicine, maybe having a blood test done so you kind of see if you are deficient in certain areas and being mindful of that. But honestly, really, it's been so big for me is to listen, um, to get out of my head and into my heart. Yeah. So the last one, number eight. Overdoing it. Yeah, it's so big, yeah. it's so big. So I personally can say that I have overdone it so many times on this journey. When I decide that I'm gonna do something, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it right, and I just become obsessed with reading about it and putting my body in through it and, and not listening. I've learned this one this year um finally paying for going down the natural route and overdoing natural things one of the big things for me was cinnamon I thought, oh cinnamon i'm i'm gonna put it in my water and i'm gonna drink it all day long because it's good for you low blood pressure and it does all these things well i i have as well with essential oils overdosed and you can you over you can overdo it on anything yeah. it, there's nothing in this world that no matter how good it is that you love Maybe there Except is one. Love. Maybe I'll say that. Except for love. Just love. But love in a healthy way. That's probably the Healthy, one. yes. But again, that overdoing is never going to be good because if you're overdoing it, it's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went through the same thing too, um, but more of a mental thing. When I first started out on my journey, when I had my son young and that kind of sparked my passion and desire to live healthy and holistically. And I was so, I became obsessed with ingredient reading and label reading and I would get, I was literally the one in the grocery store. I was by myself. I was yelling at the food. So I was like, <laughs> it says no MSG. But then there's yeast extract, which is another form of MSG. Then that's uh, a natural one. But I just, I would get so upset. And I took it to the extreme to where it was creating unhappiness and disharmony mm. in myself because I just became so obsessed. And it was like the whole other end of the spectrum. So it's really about finding balance and I personally don't eat organic 100% of the time. I do as much as I can. Um, like, I, just, I still drink coffee. I can't get rid of it so bad. Well, again, coffee is good for some people. In moderation. Yeah, and for some people, if their body digests it fine, digests it fine, coffee is good. Yeah. For me, it's too acidic. And when I have coffee, my stomach burns. Now my bladder burns. Like, it just... It... It... Green tea is my jam. That's yeah. what I'm, I keep sipping over here. It's my mm -hmm. Oregon cup of green tea. 
Yeah, it, just, it all goes back to the first thing we talked about is mindset. It's just finding a balance and what works for you and honoring your body mm -hmm. and making sure that you're following your inner guidance system to create harmony inside mm -hmm. of yourself. Because mm -hmm. you could eat healthy all day and if you're not happy in your brain, your brain has an effect on the rest of your body. So Absolutely. It's, it kind of like almost not completely X's itself out. But They say there's more proof that meditation can create world peace then aspirin cures a headache. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. And what they're saying is your mind has such a powerful capability yeah. to change your body. When we do meditations on healing, we can heal. And it really comes down to making that a part of your routine and part of that practice. When you're overdoing it, you're in your mind, you're not in your heart, you're not in your intuition, you're not listening to it. I, you know, again, I'm, I'm overdoing it. I think sometimes I know and I don't know. I'm not a doctor. You know, I ha I'm not a naturopathic. I've just personally have been on this journey for a whole long time now. And the one big key component that I um, can admit to through my switching to a more holistic, healthy life is a tendency to overdo it with some natural ingredients and realizing now that really calming down, taking a minute and listening to what my body is saying because it even though it's good for you, you can't overdo it on that. Yeah. I grocery shop with Bita and you just said about being in there and yelling out loud. Yeah. So my Bita and I grocery shop together and oh, we're huge on organic. Like yeah. if you could talk to us, we're like, oh, they don't get me touching it. Um, but she'll do sugar on some things and I won't or they do gluten and I don't. And then sometimes like I'll grab, I'll grab something and she'll, Oh girl, that got sugar in it. Or she'll grab it on like pizza, don't you know that's not fully organic? So we're we go through the grocery store yelling and we're both five foot. She's actually shorter than me. She, I'm five foot one, she's five foot. Um so these two tiny girls in these huge carts, because we hate grocery shopping, so we do it once a month. Yelling, oh, did you know that has five, four, three, two, one in it? And she's like, No, girl, it does. I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, Oh, that's made in China. I was like, No, I love it. And they say like China doesn't have the same level of standards. standards. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like their garlic, man, I'm gonna ruin this for you, has high levels of lead and like other metals that it's picking up and the way that it's produced. So when you buy garlic, you wanna look for garlic that has little springs at the bottom. And if it's flat cut off, basically they don't do it. So farmer's markets, finding your grocery store that does help produce it. Thrive Market is a website you can buy from online um, that can get a lot of this to your door. Imperfect Produce started in California. It now actually exists here in Texas too, and I love them. They'll deliver to your door, no matter where you are in the United States. There's really no excuse anymore because Amazon and Thrive Market delivers to your door. And when you're switching, people say, it's so expensive. No, your life is so expensive. And what, if you're eating a lot of meats, um, take the meat out, switch to some vegetarian meals, and you're gonna balance out. Buy in season, go to local farmer's market, and think about how much better you feel. And if you are overweight, you know you're overweight, and you're like, oh, it's just so expensive to eat healthy. Well, if you're cutting down how much you're eating, you're moving to wholesome foods, but you already saved right there because you're eating less. So there's just, there's no, and the last part I want to say to that is that the universe provides. Always. When you have set the intention mm -hmm. and you've made the decision that I'm going to serve my body and I'm going to serve others, you're going to be amazed at what opens for you. Yeah. Your next door neighbor might be like, hey, yo, I, I made tomatoes. Do you want some? And next thing you know, you have free produce. Yeah. So overdoing it. Yeah. Come back to that listening. Yeah. Come back to the listening. And I just want to add one more thing. Going back to mindset. I'm super passionate about the mindset. Mm -hmm. You, when you're switching to a holistic lifestyle, you really have to get some self-awareness. Self-awareness I'm super big on too. It's, I do it every day. Just kind of checking in with yourself mentally where you're at, um, why you believe a certain thing. Talk to your friends and family, ask them, um, how do you view me? Or, you know, ones that are supportive that will support you in that. But we have so many beliefs that we don't even know are there that run our lives. Mm -hmm. So you can eat all the healthy food, you can go on all the diets, but if you don't believe that you are worthy of being healthy, and and don't have self-sabotaging uh, uh, yes. beliefs and behaviors, yeah, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of like telling 
to you're sending out two different signals. So you're eating the right things, but you're not thinking the right things. Mm -hmm. And they clash with each other. So they have mm -hmm. to be in alignment. Your inner body, every part of your body has to be in alignment. That's why it's number one mindset. It is the most important thing. The most important thing. You want to eat not so good foods for you. That's okay. Everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not feeling guilty about it. Yeah. Mindset is so important. And then you're attracting to yourself falling off again. So, mm -hmm. you know, you want to have that indulgent. Nate eats ice cream still and he admits it. He thinks it's good for himself um, because he probably feels so good when he's eating it. So, Nate, keep eating your ice cream. <laughs> it's good for you. He feels so good. Mine's honey, but it's still good for you. But I overdo it and I will admit I did it again last night for my honey. And I know that we were really big about saying, you know, natural, 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 natural. And I, we have three doctors in my family and plus modern medicine. Mm -hmm. There's something so special about Eastern medicine and Western medicine and bridging that gap from what we know from the wisdom of our plant leaders in the past who've, you know, the trees told them that aspirin cures a headache. That's where this has come, has all of our medicine comes from at some point, something in, in plants or in nature that we've, we've taken and done things with or you know, you can still eat a bark and have that and have that benefit. But bridging those two together, I think is imperative. And yeah. we don't leave modern medicine out. Bless the doctors and the nurses in my family. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they've known uh, myself and, and them to kind of sometimes, you know, get at heads about how, how to treat something. But I don't think it's black and white. I think it's gray. And yeah. I think it's building the bridge yeah. between those if I get in a car accident, you better send me into a doctor yeah. and do all the mojo things that, yeah. you know, is needed to be done. Bless them for saving so many million lives. But chronic illness is different. And when we have something that's chronic and continuous, when we seek a pharmaceutical to cover it, we're not curing it. Mm -mm. We're not, we really got to look at ways that we can cure it. How can you get? And they say things, you know, there's some things incurable. It, you know, maybe that's true, but there are natural things you can do to alleviate symptoms and to make it better. Show me something that there's not natural things you can do, and I, I you would just blow my mind. But yeah. everything that I've been aware of, there's a natural thing you can do with it. And so what we love about, one thing about Sister Sarah, she's a doctor, a DO, and she is just practicing more and more and going to the natural world and taking things like aromatherapy health, nutrition classes, um, and she's really big about incorporating that into her modern day practice. So thank you all the doctors yes, that are absolutely. doing that. Wiseman here in Texas, that's the last mm -hmm. one we'll mention. When you go in, he has all these documentaries on um, that talk about you know pharmaceutical companies and being paid out and sold out. And it's just not your best interest. And really looking to what you're eating, what, all these things that we're talking about, what, what we're saying to ourselves, your community, and having that. There's really key factors into what's going on. Yes. I think it was um, Hippocrates, maybe? I might yeah. be saying it wrong. He had a hospital, and he made the hospital right by the water where watercress grew, mm. and he helped people heal their lungs, and watercress heals your lungs. It's Watercress so is food, so good for you. Yes. I have a batch growing right now on my window. Food is medicine. Yeah. It can be. Hippocrates said, let thy food be thy medicine, yes. and thy medicine be thy food. And, and Thomas the Edison said the doctors of the future will use medicine to heal. Food. Mm -hmm. It is medicine to heal. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really, really key. Think about it like a car. Yeah. We're all engines operating. And if you go put bad gas in a car, water in a car, what happens? Yeah. It shuts down. It breaks. It does all these things start happening and, and not working right in the engine. That's our engines. So what you're putting in there does affect it. And we said it on the last podcast. Um, about gut and emotions and just thinking about how fast when we're when we're drinking how we can feel different well your food when you're putting it in there and I know my sweet beta is like oh alcohol is different processes different in your liver uh, but this is a world-renowned doctor who studies this who's talking about relating alcohol drinking to your emotions as it is to what's in your gut and how we're feeling so it's just an analogy for you to understand that what you're putting into your body will affect your emotions absolutely mm -hmm. and I think that's what we have for today yeah oh i love you all no more family so much yeah and each of you that have already subscribed to what we're doing i know you got like hey help us thank you yeah for real that's big big thank yous 
And um, as always, as they say in every video they are here, please subscribe, send to a friend, put a comment in there, help us to help others who are on this path. And if you want to be interviewed, if you have something to say, contact us because we love interviewing you. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you guys for tuning in. Bye. Bye. We hoped you loved that show. If you want to know more, then head over to our website where you can find everything from our toxic free product line to our up-to-date newsletters. You can check us out at www.natureofnomore.com. Thanks for listening.